Welcome to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show, created and hosted by Scott Knudsen, to explore the crossroads of horses and business. Now here's your host, Scott Knudsen. Hi, and welcome to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I'm your host, Scott Knudsen. Whether you're watching our podcast on one of our many platforms or listening to us on the radio out in California on KCAA, our NBC affiliate out in California. We really appreciate you watching and listening to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Today, we got a fun show for you. I met this gentleman a couple of weeks ago in Dallas, and uh, we just hit it off as friends, and I love what he's doing. And Corey Ferguson is on the show. He is a marketing and sponsorship director for the Natu- Na- National Little Bridges Rodeo Association. It's one of the fastest growing uh, rodeo associations in the country. So, Corey, thanks for being on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Man, it's so I so, get to talk about Little Bridges. I'm I'm all for it. So I love it, man. I got to meet some of the young ladies representing Little Bridges and got to meet you. And and uh man, I just had such a good time and, and I love the Western industry for sure. But the youth coming up in the Western industry is so exciting and it has to be a fun job to get to be around so many great kids. Oh, well it is. I mean it's it sometimes gets chaotic. I mean, at our finals, you know, we had about 1,425 contestants. So, you know, you can just imagine that many kids there for over a week. Uh, it's a lot of fun and a, and a lot of craziness. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's all for the kids. And, and that's kind of why what, what we're here, you know, for the future rodeo and for the future of, of uh, you know, just bringing youth up in, in that Western heritage. It's, it's pretty awesome. I oh, man, I love it. I can't wait to talk more about the finals and such. But I found out we're just we're neighbors. We're kind of in Texas. We're neighbors. We're an hour and a half apart. So that's kind of cool. Are you from Texas? No, no. I originally I grew up in Western South Dakota on a cattle and horse ranch uh, up in Western South Dakota. Uh, nobody's heard of where I'm from. It's it's a, <laughs> it's, a it's out in the middle of nowhere. It's close. It's about sixty miles from the closest town. But uh, the closest town everybody's heard of, kind of Sturgis, they have the big motorcycle rally. Mm. There, so that's okay. Very cool, man. Very cool. And and I was reading a little bit about you, you know, doing my homework. And, I, you know, it, so you were a college uh, rodeo champ, steer wrestling. That's a that's a that's a big guy sport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I'm not a big guy. I had to uh, kind of rely on technique. Um, big heart. Know, so, yeah, big heart and a lot of technique versus the, yeah. kind of the the bigger guys just uh, you know can can throw them over and, and I had to finesse them a little bit more. So that's really cool, man. That's really cool. So are you a generational rodeo guy? Like your family's generational, or did you just jump in and start? No, no, I I I, uh, I, I don't know if I had probably been disowned if I didn't get into rodeo. Uh, <laughs> my, my, my grandparents on both sides uh, rodeoed, and uh, both my parents rodeoed, and, and my older brother rodeoed. So I, I think, you know, I would have been the black sheep of the family if I hadn't gotten into it. But, oh, yeah, you had you know, to. It, it, it was in my blood. And, uh, the, the you know, kind of going back to Little Bridges a little bit, it was that family support growing up, knowing that, you know, we had the whole family behind us and, and with horses and, and supplying cattle and going out and practicing with us and t- hauling us all over the state, you know, and, and to rodeos. So, you know, really, it really gave me a sense of family and togetherness. And, and you know, and that's what rodeo is a lot of it, what it's really about. Man, I love that. It, it really is, you know, just the, the family and the teamwork and it is work, you know, and, and uh, I think that's why it's so great, you know, when we were talking that the sponsorship, you can explain what it's like to grow up in a rodeo family and and uh, the marketing side, too. You've lived it. So it really gives you an advantage to help the new families coming in. Absolutely. I mean, it, uh, you know, it's it's it, it like I said, it was it's kind of been in my blood. So I can talk the talk and walk the walk and, and I can visit with basically anybody in the Western world. And even those that are new to the Western world kind of explain it in layman's terms so that they understand it a little bit better and understand what we're about, what the organization's about, what rodeo's about, what the Western lifestyle's about. So, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm all about it. That's I, lo- I love being able to, to do that. Yeah, I, I love how you're advocate for it. Cause so am I. I mean, there's nothing better in the Western lifestyle and just the way everybody helps each other, you know, and, and gets along and tries to do the right thing as much as they can. Um, yeah. so, so with Little Bridges, what, what are y'all seeing? Are you seeing – the generational rodeo athlete coming up? Are you starting to see more new people, like maybe first generation? 
Well, there's what's surprising is there's a good mix. Of course, there's the generational awesome. aspect of it. There's a lot of people that are that just like I did. They grew up in it and in their families. But you know, more and more, I'm seeing you know the, the you'll even see. I, I heard a lot of the stories during the finals of kids saying, you know, I didn't grow up in it, but I, I you know, had a friend down the road that that rodeoed, and I got into it through them or. You know, I just was really interested in it. Or some pe- I even talked to some people the other day who said, you know, we've kind of been on the the non-Western side of things. We've been on the the uh, in- more the equestrian uh, English mm. side of things, but we're interested in the everything that Little Bridges has to offer as far as barrel racing and pole bending and goat tying and some of those things. So we want to, you know, get more into the Western side of it. So we're seeing some of that too. So it's really great to to be seeing. It come from from all angles, and and Little Britches is really in a growth mode right now, and I think it because of that, it is it is all of those things mixed together is why we're in a growth mode. It's because it's just not that generational um, thing. That's not the only thing driving it. There's some other avenues where it's coming from, which is really great. I love that. I love the generational part because that's the you know the the passion part. But the new ones coming in, it just brings a different energy in, and. Uh... It's fun to see them kind of get along, you know, and, and uh, work hard. And I know y'all were like celebrities walking around Dallas. You know, you had some of the young ladies representing Little Bridges. And, man, they were so well poised and just they were so fun to speak to. And, uh, man, that's got to be fun. Yeah, we've got we've got some great girls in our royalty court for this year. I mean, of course, we have our, our queen and our junior princess and our little wrangler princess. So we uh, have the privilege of actually having three uh, royalty members um, go around into to events like WISA and talk to, you know, everybody, like you, like you said, everybody that's new to the Western world, as well as the people that have been around in it forever. They're just, they're, like I said, they're very poised young ladies and they do a phenomenal job for us. And they're really uh, a brand ambassador for not only for Little Bridges, but for the sport of, of rodeo and for the Western lifestyle in general, which is pretty awesome. I love you said that, man, because they really are ambassadors. And, you know, with us, we love our industry, but people that don't know it, and that's their first impression of those young ladies, they're going to want to know more about the industry because of the, the energy and the passion. And, dang, those big smiles, you know, you can't beat that. Um, and, I, and I've got to say, too, you know, it, it's kind of funny that, you know, a lot of what you'll see, uh, especially with some of the, the older generations of cowboys, they're kind of, you know, you get into an interview with them or whatever, and they're kind of the yelps and nopes and, and pretty pretty short answers but to have these young ladies that are very well spoken um can speak about rodeo can speak about you know fashion whatever you know whatever the 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 subject is they can speak to it and they can speak well about it and you know we need those types of ambassadors that can really speak to somebody who just has gone to their first rodeo for the first time or somebody that's been in it for you know 40 50 years so absolutely it's great, you know, for our industry and for rodeo in particular to have that welcoming committee out there. That's awesome. Well, let's talk about some of the events in Little Bridges Rodeo. So maybe somebody's not familiar with Little Bridges. So we'll describe it and then talk about some of the events and how to get involved. Well, the good thing is, is you know, you can get involved with Little Bridges at a very young age. Our Little Wranglers, their age group is is five to eight years old. So Love it. Love you know, it. That, they can start off when they're pretty darn young in, in some of the events. And then, uh, of course, we have our, our junior category, and that's uh, 9 to, to 13. And then our seniors are 14 to, to 18. So, really, we're, we're really covering youth as they're growing up. Um, and if somebody gets in at five years old and stays through till they're 18, that's, that's quite a career to, to be able to uh, hang your hat on, so to speak. Absolutely. And whether they stay in rodeo for their profession or or whether they do it and then they get out and go to school and do something else, it's just going to help them no matter where they go. Yeah. I mean, between just so many life skills that they learn, uh, I mean, you know, responsibility, sportsmanship, um, teamwork, you know, hanging out, you know, really the and you know this, the the rodeo in general is is such a a breeding ground for for making lifelong friends. I mean, Absolutely. I have friends that I made, you know, back when I was in that age through rodeo that are still some of my best friends to this day. And so, you know, you you just can't beat that. And 
you know, for someone like me, you know, my wife and I were just talking about this the other day. For someone like me, I grew up literally in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you know, it was five miles to the close, our closest neighbor. And so you didn't, if you didn't, if it wasn't for Rody, you didn't get off the ranch very much. And so you didn't have anybody else to really talk to or relate to other than your family. But on those weekends or in practice sessions, even during the week when everybody would come together and practice at, at, you know, at our arena or on the weekends where we would travel somewhere, you'd get to see those friends that, you know, that maybe it had been, you know, since through the winter you hadn't seen them or whatever. And it was just like a reunion when you would get to see them at that first rodeo in the spring, you know, and it's pretty nice, pretty cool deal to be able to, to have that and just uh, look, really look, have something to look forward to when you go to that next rodeo and see all your friends again. I and love you know, that, man. The, so, I love that, man. The, it, the, whole, the whole sportsmanship aspect of it, you know, there's there's not a lot of sports I see out there. You know, you see some here and there, but rodeo, the other thing is, too, is that you are cheering just as much for that that person that is competing against you. You want yeah. them to do well because that's your really good friend. And if and if you both do well, great. Or if you don't do well and they do well, that's awesome. So, you know, uh, the the camaraderie that you see out there between competitors is is almost unparalleled that how, how much you really true truly wish that your uh your competitor is doing doing well as well you know that's so cool man that's so cool and and what what do y'all in i believe like 30 something states and how many rodeos in a year oh man yeah we're in 32 <laughs> states uh and we've got affiliates you know and that's the thing i was just explaining to, to a sponsor the other day that that even in a given state you might have uh, a number of franchises that operate kind of under the little britches umbrella. So you might have four or five different franchises within a state that, that run their own little britches rodeos. So even though we're in 33 States, uh, there are a lot more franchises out there. And, you know, our, our membership, like I said, is growing like a weed. We're right now, we're between 3,300 and 3,400, uh, memberships. So we have, uh, about close to 3,400 active uh, rodeo members out there. Um, like I said, our our last year um, at the finals, uh, they had almost 1,675 competitors, uh, which was a record. And then this year was down just a little bit, you know, with diesel prices and everything else, all the other craziness going on, it was down just a little bit, but but still a, a strong showing. And, and it just keeps growing and growing. Um, and that's one thing that we're blessed with is that we are showing no signs of slowing down. Well, I love the fact that you have so many rodeos in states that you don't have to travel across the country to do a rodeo. You can travel within your state and stay pretty busy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and there just aren't um, in some states, there aren't that many avenues for uh, the youth to kind of go to different rodeos, youth rodeos that are specifically yeah. for the youth, other than, right. you know, like your little local play days and things like that. But to have a national organization to be under that umbrella and to be able to travel to some rodeos that are fairly local to you, that, that's, a, that's really a blessing for, for our youth out there. I, I think so, too. And I, I think having the structure around them and having the big name speakers behind them, it just really lends to the credibility of Little Riches for sure. But it, it lets the contestants and the families know they're in a good spot. Absolutely. Yep. It is. It is uh, uh, yeah, and as we continue, I mean, it, it, since our finals, I probably have seen uh, 10 requests for new franchises as well. So, I mean, the, the interest awesome. is out there, and, you know, and then it, it's just going to keep growing. And so uh, that gives me a lot of faith in the future of, of rodeo, Western heritage, and, you mm -hmm. know, in our ag world in general. Uh, that, uh, you know, I was, you know, there have been times in my life that you kind of see some of that you know, the focus on agriculture and, and the family farms and ranches going away a little bit. But this this really our organization is helping renew that focus a little bit. So that's something to really be said about uh, uh, kids that are interested. And even if they're not coming from a farming and ranching background, to be able to be involved in this is, is pretty, pretty phenomenal. Absolutely. I love the way the industry shares. We want new people. We want new ideas to come in, but we want them to respect what we have and love what we have as well. So um, that's why I couldn't wait to do the show because it is a big outreach for our industry. And, and just because they're younger guys and ladies, 
they should be taken serious because it's a great thing what Little Bridges is doing and what they stand for. Yeah, you know, and I, I, that what brought me to Little Bridges, uh, you know, more than anything is that I have been, as you said earlier, you're an advocate for, for rodeo western lifestyle, agriculture in general, and really that's what I've kind of tried to do through my whole career, and to be able to do it now through an organization like the National Little Bridges Rodeo Association. Mm-hmm even brings it home even more because the youth are our future. Um, those of us that are involved in the Western industry, if, if we don't have the youth to carry on that tradition, then, then it's lost, you know? Right. And, and so I think it, it's incumbent on people like myself to be able to do whatever I can to promote the Western lifestyle, to promote rodeo, to, to keep that going because, um, you know, if we don't, we blink, and it could be gone, you know. Um, so we've got to got to keep promoting it. I love that. And we'll come back from break here in just a minute, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the the finals and all the kids and the horses and the trailers and what that's like to attend. So we'll be right back on the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Scott will be right back with more. Hi, I'm Scott Knutson, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Heard on KCAA Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd like to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about. Those that know me know I love my coffee. In the morning, afternoon, and even late in the evening, I enjoy a good cup of coffee almost any time of the day. Now, my team at the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show has been working for several months on creating and introducing our own brand of coffee. We wanted to make sure that we got it just right. We don't want to put our name on anything unless we're 100% certain that it's the best product available, and we've finally done it. We have created a wonderful line of coffees, 13 fantastic flavors offered in whole bean, ground, and K-cups, any way you like to brew your coffee. Now, each of our coffees carries our brand, the very same brand that we put on our horses, our trailers, and our chaps. So you know that this is a quality product. And we only use 100% Arabica beans, the very best beans available. Just listen to some of these wonderful blends and flavors. Jamaican Me Crazy, Honduran San Marcos, Chocolate Cherry Amaretto, Breakfast Blend, and my very favorite, Haley's Blend. A coffee so good, we named it after my daughter. You can order these coffees today by going online to javacowboy.com. That's javacowboy.com. And if you order today, you can get an extra 10% off your final purchase just by entering the promo code COWBOY on checkout. Remember, that's promo code COWBOY for an extra 10% off. Just go to javacowboy.com to order your coffee today. Hello, I'm Scott Knutson, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I want to tell you about a product I've tried and I love, and I feel the Cowboy Entrepreneur audience will as well. It's Rebellious Infusions. Rebellious Infusions, they're little packets of flavor. And you know, it gets hot in South Texas, over 100 degrees every day. And I like my water, but it's water. So I use these infusions, put them in my water. It makes it cold. It's great flavor, zero sugar, zero calories. It's pure energy infusions, rebellious infusions. Go to drinkrebellious.com or on all social media platforms. Drink Rebellious. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I'm your host, Scott Knutson, with Corey Ferguson, the Marketing and Sponsorship Director for the Nat- National Little Bridges Rodeo Association. I don't know why I struggle on national. I just do. But, uh, Corey, so let's talk a little bit about the finals uh, at the Lazy Arena. Can you describe or take someone that's never been there what that's like? Well, for one thing, I mean, if you're in the Western world, you've heard of the Lazy Arena. It's, it's mm-hmm. kind of it's iconic. Um, up there in Guthrie, Oklahoma, um, phenomenal indoor, very large facility. And, you know, I just joined Little Bridges uh, a couple months before our our national finals this year. And so, you know, I kind of jumped in with both feet. But but I think, you know, of course, now I, it, it seemed to be running like a, a just a fine-tuned machine and it, it's pretty amazing because you can imagine uh if you have over 1400 com- competitors and you've got all these horse trailers and you've got all these these uh you've got the horse trailers you've got the the rvs you've got all these stalls um that had to be installed you know because the lazy is only so big 
And so we had to bring in a lot of temporary stalls. And then, of course, you know, golf carts because it's a, a very large facility. But the amazing thing was is that this year everybody was able, you know, that had a camper or a uh, RV was able to stay on site, which awesome. was quite an accomplishment um, at the Lazy e Arena there. And all the horses were able to be stalled, you know, at the Lazy e Arena. So it, it was uh, – it's something to behold. I mean, everybody tried to tell me about it. And then when I got there, you, you, until you experience it, you just cannot imagine it because the, the size and the breadth of, of how large all of this is when everybody gets together, it's pretty amazing. And then, you know, the rodeo performances themselves, uh, you know, we did two performances a day from, uh, started out on July, Monday, July 4th, and the short go performance was on Sunday, July 10th. But, Every day up until Sunday, we ran two performances a day. And those performances, we ran four arenas. So inside the Lazy E itself, we had three arenas going at the same time. And then just to the north of the Lazy E arena, they have a covered outdoor arena. And so our fourth arena was out there. So from the start to finish, um, we were running four arenas just going and blowing. And so it, it was something else. That's incredible, Corey. So running four arenas twice a day, that's like eight rodeos a day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, for a week. And that's It's it's almost yeah. like a whole town, a small town just develops at the Lazy E. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and, and because Lazy E's kind of in the middle, not really in the middle of nowhere, but it's not really close to anything. Guthrie's the closest, and it's still about, you know, 15 minutes away or so, 15, 20 minutes away. So a lot of people spent a lot of time there and talk about that community feel that we talked about before. I mean, it was just amazing to go around to the different campgrounds and see the setups and and how some of these families all gather together and really talking to some of these folks. I mean, this is their one chance from somebody maybe from Arkansas to meet up with their friends from Utah uh, and, you know, come together that one time a year. And so it, it's just quite a gathering, you know, and the cookouts and, and the gatherings are, it's just, it's quite amazing to see. Golly, you talk about getting back to grassroots America and just, just, just uh, having just friends and family all around you and camping out together and, and still trying to perform at a very high level. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's Americana for sure. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's still trying to perform at a high level, even the, uh, even the, veterinary uh set up there was something to behold i mean they had a huge uh tent set up for the veterinary operation and because you know when you have that many horses there uh right. because we had about 3100 stalls or stalls um and they were pretty they were filled um, we even had a, a you know they they were filled to the brim and so you can imagine that veterinary tent when you have that many horses there for that long and you know and it's hot um, there, so you, you're dealing with a lot of different little things that come up, and of course, those kids all want their horses to be performing at their top level. So there's a lot of care taken, and uh, we're we were pretty fortunate to have a great veterinary team on staff there the whole week that uh, took care. Of. And every time I'd walk by that veterinary staff, there were three or four or five horses, you know, underneath that tent um, being cared for for minor things on up to to major things. So I, I love operation. that. You know, it's it's one more thing you don't think about. Oh, y'all do, but you know, the general public wouldn't think how many veterinarians you need for that many horses. And, and, uh, because we do, we take the animals, we always take that first, you know, they always get treated. They're always taken care of first, but the hay and the feed and the food for the people too. I mean, it's a, it's a full operation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. what about sponsors? So I, I know you have so many great sponsors of little bridges. Do they get to come out and kind of watch and be a part of it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we have some, tremendous sponsors and we're so thankful for them but um the good thing too about kind of having that internal city so to speak there a lot of the the sponsors uh also set up vending operations during the whole uh the whole deal so we have a lot of sponsors that that are there as vendors and then we have just standalone vendors there as well um so you know you can if you're looking for anything in the western world and even you know whether it's just some clothing or whatever i mean uh it's it's there um so it's its own little city in itself uh with all the vendors there that and and you know and it takes some great sponsors and some great vendors uh to be able to 
kind of pull it all together. And we want to make sure we offer something for people. So if they don't want to have to leave the lazy E, they don't have to. They can just stay there and, and get whatever they need for their horse or for themselves all during the week. I love that, man. So do you see people coming out? Maybe they don't have any kids in it or, or, or just want to go out and watch youth ride rodeo. Do you see like just general public wanting to come out there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We got a lot of inquiries about, Hey, you know, is it free? And, and if, you know, how much a, the tickets were and people just, just wanted to come out and experience it because, you know, really there aren't very many opportunities to see youth rodeo and that many events and that many competitors in, in one place. And really, it, it really is, you know, some of the best of the best. And, you know, the cool thing to think about is that, you know, some of them will, like you said, some of them will continue on and they may not uh, compete in rodeo after they get out of the bridges, but a lot of them will. And, you know, you're going to see a lot of your future NFR, your national finals rodeo competitors in the PRCA, you're going to see them um, here. And you can think back and say, you know, man, I saw that that kid when he was only five years old competing at the Little Bridges finals. And here he is winning the world championship in the PRCA. So um, kind of cool. It's, it's pretty cool to think about. We've got a lot that of really alumni cool. that, uh, carry on the, that carried on the tradition of Little Bridges. Man, that's awesome, man. So how did Little Bridges start? Was it just a brain idea? Like just someone said, hey, let's start this for the youth? Or how did it originate? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, it, it's been going, and I might have to to do a little reference here, but it's been going for a long time. But, you know, I think just like with rodeo itself, it was just mm -hmm. a way back when, you know, rodeo got started just from ranch cowboys wanting yeah. to get together and get rodeo started. And I think, you know, with a thing like Little Bridges, it, it, you know, it started out probably just with somebody, you know, at a play day saying, you know, it would really be nice if we could have something like this on a larger scale, on a larger level. And we need to have an outlet for for kids to be able to compete and and potentially go on. It, it like I said, it's a breeding ground for potential for PRCA and for you know amateur associations for college rodeo and high school rodeo and all these different things for these kids to be able to to have another avenue to be able to compete, hone their skills, and you know compete at the highest level. And you know really more than anything, I think that's what what got Little Bridges started was just a, a need and a, lo a love for rodeo and a need for saying, hey, we've got to figure out a way to, to have uh, these kids be able to compete on a, on a much larger scale. I, I love that. And let's talk about some of the events for maybe the, the younger guys and then on maybe to the high school guys. What are some of the events that some, maybe someone's never even experienced Little Bridges before? Well, I mean, it, it, in, it it's expanded, you know, over the years, but I mean, there are such a, it, 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 that's another thing about Little Bridges. I mean, in the PRCA, you know, now you're, you're seeing more and more breakaway ropers, the, mm -hmm. the ladies breakaway roping. But for years and years, it was just uh, ladies barrel racing. But, you know, we, for the girls, I mean, there's breakaway roping, barrel racing, goat tying, trail course. Uh, we, you know, we ha have a great trail course competition. There's pole bending, um, you know, and and for the little guys, you know, that, there, that we have flag racing and the little kids can can goat tie and and you know and there's even a way for the for the rough stock riders for the for the guys that ride the you know bulls barebacks and saddle broncs that they even have uh, an avenue so that they can get started but the 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 risk is not going to be nearly as great because they can they can ride steers with the saddle bronc saddle or a kind of a bareback riding rig and, you know, be able to still compete, but not have to get on, you know, a full size horse. Um, and so it can kind of get them into that learning mode on here, here's how I ride a saddle bronc. And then maybe, you know, as I grow older, I can actually get on a saddle bronc horse um, versus, versus a steer, which I learned on growing up. So it's, it's a great way to kind of break kids into even those rough stock events that uh, that are a little, you know, uh, require a little bit more finesse to be able to get in. Absolutely. I, I love the way it's scaled to the talent level and to the age, you know, that way, you know, it's, it's a great way. Of, it's a great education. You know, it's not just throwing them out there hoping they do well. 
Well, yeah, I mean, the the little Wranglers, I mean, you know, when you're five to eight years old, it's pretty awesome to be able to actually go and compete at a national finals level rodeo when you're that young. I mean, uh, you don't see that a lot. I mean, you might, like I said, you might see the little local play day, but for them to compete, compete on a national scale um, when you're five years old, that is pretty cool. In my mind. Oh my gosh, Corey. I mean, that just, and not only is it's cool to do it, it gives you so much confidence back at school doing homework or playing baseball, whatever else you're doing. It just makes you have that confidence level that little britches gave them. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's really cool. And I love what you said about the breakaway roping and all this for the women, because that is becoming more and more important. It always has been, but it's, it's such a light on it now and how good those ladies are. And I love you. Let the younger ladies start doing that. So you're yeah. building their future. Well, and it's, it's, it's so awesome too, because these young ladies and, and the young men too, I mean, they become horsemen and horsewomen. Yeah. I mean, they, they can handle a horse and to be able to see that, especially in the, in those really young kids, um, that just gives me more faith in, in those kids growing up that, you know, that's another skill that they're learning is how to, you know, a horse is, is not an easy thing to, to handle sometimes. Yeah, and absolutely. These little kids be able to jump on and run a barrel pattern or a pole, pole bending pattern. It's, it's pretty handy for them to be able to, to have this skill. Um, it's, absolutely. It's awesome it is. Watch. And like I said, you know, the, the, the one thing about, you know, going back a little bit and how you mentioned people from the outside, well, there's not very many um, sports where, you know, uh, people can just come and see kids that are five and six years old compete on that level, um, especially somebody that's not familiar with rodeo. And that's where you get a lot of the oohs and the ahs, you know, and just it's 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 pretty cute to just watch, you know, a five-year-old go out there and run a, a pretty smooth b- barrel pattern um, on a horse that is, they just look tiny on some of those horses, you know, and they're riding this massive horse and they're going, you know, as fast as they can around these barrels. And the cheers that go up when those little wranglers do those patterns and stuff is just, that's when the, the uh, lazy really gets rocking is when you can see those little kids just, just doing it, you know. I love that, man. And you're creating rodeo fans, too, that want to go out and just watch the kids, and they get hooked on it. And Man, that's awesome. Absolutely. That's cool. You know, and I love the fact that um, the kids are learning to take care of something else besides themselves. They're taking care of other animals. You know, they're helping their friends get ready to ride, and it's really teaching them life skills at, at a very high level. Well, and, you know, and it, it really, you know, in most, you know, I haven't seen it very much where the kids aren't responsible for everything, you know, and, and sometimes you'll see, you know, parents these days that are scared to get a kid a, a puppy because they're like, well, you know, it's, you got to take care of that puppy. And then it ends up being the parent taking care of it. But that's not the case here with a lot of these kids that are growing up on ranches and whatnot. I mean, they're, they're, the care of those horses is, is their responsibility. So it's their responsibility to feed them and to get out there and make sure that the horse is doing well. And then also to, to saddle them up and get them ready for, to, to, to get in the practice pen. I mean, it's, it's, it's their responsibility. And, and so it's teaching a lot of skills that go way outside of just rodeo. It, they are life skills. I love that, man. I love that. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back and we'll just, uh, for our last last uh, few minutes, I want to talk about how do people get involved, how they find you, maybe they haven't been in rodeo, how they become a part of it, and just talk about all the econom- economic impact that Little Bridges provides for, for the industry itself. So we'll be right back on the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Thank you for listening to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Scott will be right back with more. For more information on Scott Knudsen, the Cowboy Entrepreneur, visit us online at cowboyentrepreneur.com. Hi, I'm Scott Knudsen, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Heard on KCAA, Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd like to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about. Those that know me know I love my coffee. In the morning, afternoon, and even late in the evening, I enjoy a good cup of coffee almost any time of the day. Now, my team at the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show has been working for several months on creating and introducing our own brand of coffee. We wanted to make sure that we got it just right. We don't want to put our name on anything unless we're 100% certain that it's the best product available. 
and we've finally done it. We have created a wonderful line of coffees, 13 fantastic flavors offered in whole bean, ground, and K-cups, any way you like to brew your coffee. Now, each of our coffees carries our brand, the very same brand that we put on our horses, our trailers, and our chaps. So you know that this is a quality product. And we only use 100% Arabica beans, the very best beans available. Just listen to some of these wonderful blends and flavors. Jamaican Me Crazy, Honduran San Marcos, Chocolate Cherry Amaretto, Breakfast Blend, and my very favorite, Haley's Blend. A coffee so good, we named it after my daughter. You can order these coffees today by going online to javacowboy.com. That's javacowboy.com. And if you order today, you can get an extra 10% off your final purchase just by entering the promo code COWBOY on checkout. Remember, that's promo code COWBOY for an extra 10% off. Just go to javacowboy.com to order your coffee today. Hello, I'm Scott Knutson, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I want to tell you about a product I've tried and I love and I feel the Cowboy Entrepreneur audience will as well. It's Rebellious Infusions. Rebellious Infusions, there are little packets of flavor. And you know, it gets hot in South Texas, over 100 degrees every day. And I like my water, but it's water. So I use these infusions, put them in my water. It makes it cold. It's great flavor, zero sugar, zero calories. It's pure energy infusions, rebellious infusions. Go to drinkrebellious.com or on all social media platforms. Drink Rebellious. Hi, and welcome back to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I'm your host, Scott Knutson with Corey Ferguson, the Marketing and Sponsorship Director for the Nas National Little Riches Rodeo Association. So, Corey, how does somebody get involved in Little Riches? Maybe they, 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 they don't know. Is there a website, or how does somebody just say, I want to start, I want to look into it? Yeah, you just you want to go to, of course, you can Google search it, but National Little Riches Rodeo Association. We have a pretty comprehensive website, uh, NL, nlbra.com. And you can go there and find out, you know, there, there's actually applications to be a contestant. There's applications to be to become a franchise if you want to start up a, a franchise rodeo, um, anything like that. Um, the information's there. Of course, people can get a hold of me. They can get a hold of our main office, which is located in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, and and we, we're happy, more than happy to help anybody out and help, help them get started on whether they want to get started in rodeo or they want to start up a rodeo. So. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome, man. It's pretty cool to get the opportunity to start a rodeo, be a franchisee of Little Riches. That would be kind of fun, you know, for sure. Well, you know, and that's really what it, people have asked about that. And I mean, really what it takes is a a person and or hopefully a group of people that want to start up a, a youth rodeo and have it affiliated with a national organization. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Absolutely. And so, you know, anybody can do it. They just got to have the the uh the try to to want to put one on you know i love that's that and to have that started. national support is just such a big deal to have when you do decide to do that so um scholarships let's talk scholarships for the kids because that's a big deal you know that's a that's a, a lot of the reason besides the passion for rodeo um you want to talk a little bit about scholarships well yeah i mean you know you just uh, of course where i met you was at the western and equestrian uh sales association the market they had up in dallas texas in and as I said, you know, as you noticed, our royalty court was there. And, and we, part of the reason we were there is we were raising money for scholarships. Um, and, and we'll also go out to the National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas, and we'll be raising money for scholarships out there as well. So, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, it's, it's about these kids being able to compete. But, but we want to be able to, to help those kids also further their education if they ch choose to do so. So we offer... Uh, a large amount of scholarships, you know, in this between our prizes and our scholarships this year, um, it was over three hundred eighty thousand dollars that we devoted to that. So, awesome. um, so it's it's a good portion of of why we are um, and what we do is is to keep these kids going through life. I love that, man. I love y'all. Just don't stick them out in the arena and you're done with them. You're helping them throughout the whole process, you know. And the goal is once they're at a certain age, you're, they're bringing more people in. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and I watched, man, I was watching y'all and, and the young ladies and the way the sponsors just loved it. And they, I mean, how do you not get behind something so good as, as little britches and, and the, the youth, 
you know, um, you just yeah, see them light our, up the room. Our dance card's getting pretty full for the NFR as well, because, you know, we're, we're going to be out there and we're going to be at the Thomas and Mac Arena where the, the National Finals Rodeo is held. So we'll be we'll be out there and we'll be selling raffle tickets and, and things out there. But I, you know, I sent out an email to all of our sponsors. And like I said, our dance card is getting a little full. I just said, hey, would you like, um, you know, our girls to make an appearance at your booth to do an autograph signing? And I've had a bunch of them jump on it. And, you know, you probably heard that earlier segment. My email was dinging and I looked quickly looked and a couple of those emails were from sponsors that want the girls to appear at their their booth to sign autographs and shake hands. And, you know, I love it's, that. It's, man. It's pretty awesome. It really is. It really is fun to see the community get together. And it's a very, I mean, the people that were at West are, you know, they're top shelf, you know, sponsors and the way they just want y'all there. I love that, man. It's so cool. It is so cool. So let's talk television. So if somebody can't make it to the lazy E to, to watch the national finals, which they should, it's just phenomenal. Is Are y'all on TV or how would they be able to follow the action? Well, the, the good thing was is that during the actual finals, we streamed live on the Cowboy Plus channel. So if you have Cowboy Plus, you, you could have streamed it and it had so many people really praise that, saying that the quality was excellent and it, they were able, the grandparents that weren't able to make it out or where, what, or, you know, to make it out to Lazy were able to watch um, their, their grandkids uh, compete. And then now we're in the process of producing a 26 episode uh show for uh rfd tv that'll be uh stay tuned i'm not sure exact the exact date when it'll be on but it, you know sometime this fall it'll be uh i think in november it'll start up and uh so we'll have a 26 episode uh, uh show that that not only just features the rodeo itself the finals rodeo but also will have some some really um uh special interest stories on some of our competitors you know that really gets behind uh, the, the arena, so to speak, and talks about their life and what they're doing. And, and so that, that. You know, that, that's going to be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. And there's uh, there's also, you know, you I've, I've got a DVR right now. I've, I'm watching some of the past episodes from when I was with the, from before when I was with the, the Little Britches that uh, they still stream some of those past episodes too. So you can jump on RFD TV if you DVR it and, and catch some of those past episodes as well. So. That's so cool, man, to get to watch the energy. And I love how you're doing the backstories on the, on the, on the uh, kids because everyone has a great story, you know, and it's so cool. Y'all took time to listen to it and to share it because it's just going to make more fans for sure. Well, just, to, just a quick segue from that. You know, one of, the one thing that was really fun during the, the finals rodeo is we got to choose uh, the uh, classic equine horse of the year, one of our sponsors, but uh, the, the classic equine horse of the year was really cool because we had, I don't know how many submissions it was. So in each category for our seniors, our juniors and our little wranglers, we had a, a stack of submissions to go through. And I, it, it I started into them. I was like, man, I, I'm going to really have to dive into these because these were one to like three page stories. Sometimes oh, man. kids would tell about their horses and, you know, it was some would bring a tear to your eye and a lot of them would bring a smile to your face. You know how much these kids care about those horses. And and it really brought it to light that, man, oh, man, these horses mean so much to these kids. So that was just a kind of a segue off that, that, that it was so cool to be able to read those and then to be able to choose these horses of the year on uh, on some tremendous horses that have a story onto their own um, yeah. beyond just these kids, you know competing that uh hey every, every everything's got a story so yeah i love that man what a blessing to get to read those stories you know about the way the kids talk about their horses and oh my goodness that, that had to be yeah, fun these horses i mean they you know so many people think you know on the ranch you know horses and the cattle and all that stuff that, that they mean a lot to these people that raise them um from the time they're a colt or a calf or whatever it, it, you know that that's their life and and you know to they pour their 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 love and their their whole life into it and so it's it's pretty cool to to be able to see that when they they're able to bring these horses to their rodeo and they've spent you know every waking minute sometimes of the day with these horses and that's that's their partner that's their best friend yeah you know, so 
Yeah, lots of born time and trailer time for sure. You know, that's yeah. <laughs> oh man. So so we were talking and 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 it's it's such a great association, but what what else is great about it is the direct impact in the economy. And I, I think I read somewhere it was like thirty million dollars in the finals, just the finals for that week. That's a big number that is helping the economy. Yeah, you know, you, uh, I've gotten to be friends with some of those local businesses around there that support us, and they said that our our event makes their year. Um, you know, for some of those little businesses, well, you can imagine. You know, you said like the veterinary deal um, was something you normal people don't think about, but mm -hmm. but you can imagine. And people don't think about, you know, they'll, they'll think about the, you know, the restaurants and things like that, that, that of course they're going to get extra business. But what people don't think about are like the tire, the local tire yeah. shop, because mm -hmm. you can imagine when you're pulling a big rig down the road, there's going to be some tire issues when you on your horse trailer or your RV or your pickup, right. um, there's going to be some tire issues. So a place like a tire place gets a phenomenal amount of business. And then the one that blew me away was... Uh, the local uh, uh, dry cleaners that on the front porch of our uh, little office we have there, the Lazy E, there would be a stack that would go up to the rafters of dry cleaning bags for people every single day. I mean, hundreds of dry cleaning bags that, they, you know, basically garbage bags full of clothes that they would send off to the cleaners. And the next day the cleaners would bring them back and, and uh, so, yeah, there's all kinds of side businesses, but the that you don't think about that really affect that local economy in a positive way. Man, I love that. Thanks for sharing that story, man. You got to look good to ride good, you know. You can't, you can't be dirty, right. man. You got to look look clean. I love that. And I was reading about Hope Counts too. You, you know, the crisis fund. So y'all are also giving back in other ways. And and uh, I, I think that's just a great story for sure. Yeah, I mean, the hope counts. I mean, you're always going to have some mishaps that, that happen in, in rodeo, in any sport. And any sport. To, to be able to have a fund there that can help um, if, if something, if a kid breaks his leg or whatever the case may be, to have a fund there that will help these kids through that because yeah, everybody knows medical bills are not cheap and, and injuries will happen. So, to have that fun there is, is just another um, really great thing uh, that we're able to do to help um, it, whatever the case may be, whether it's, you know, from having our scholarship program to Hope Counts to to just having the award prizes and, and money available to, to, you know, make it so that it's, you know, because it, it, it's not uh, easy to ask these families um to, to travel down the road. And, you know, it, I go back to my parents. I, I think back and I, I think back now that I kind of took for granted then what I really truly appreciate now, what all they did for me. Not only, you know, my dad, he, he would always say, um, I don't care. He, you, you know, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to get our work done during the day. So if it is six in the morning till eight o'clock at night, and that's what it takes to get our work done. And that's what it takes. But, you know, I'll, I'll go out and help you practice. So there were a lot of nights when we would flip on the arena lights. Luckily, we had a, we had a lighted arena. We'd be out there at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night practicing. But it was the whole family. It was grandma and grandpa helping out. You know, you got to gather the, the, the practice cattle. You got to get your horses in. You got to get them saddled and get, get everything ready to go. So there are so many sacrifices that that families make so that their kids can have this opportunity. And it, it goes all the way through the family. Like I said, it's not just mom and dad, it's brothers and sisters and grandma and grandpa, and sometimes aunts and uncles and cousins, you know, it's everybody joins in to help these kids kind of achieve their dreams. I love that, man. I love that. It says so, so well. And uh, we, we plan on being at the NFR as well for the 10 days and we're going to be busy for sure. But man, so, so the young ladies, they fly in from across the country to hang out with you and, and their families, and y'all are just seeing sponsors and representing the association. What what a great learning opportunity for them to get to network and, and, and see that global scale of industry. Well, yeah, and the other thing that they're going to get to be a part of um, and actually be a part of, which is really cool, is the Miss Rodeo America contest. Awesome. Um, they're, they're, going, they're going to be a part of that. So they'll get to see kind of what those contestants are going through 
and they're going to uh, be there at different times and helping and doing that. So they're in, actually included in the Miss Rodeo America contest, but they're going to see it firsthand. So if, if, if it's their dream to one day compete for the Miss Rodeo America, they're going to have it at a very long, young age. I mean, you know, our little wrangler is somewhere between five and eight years old, and she's going to get to go out there and see um, – kind of you know what the the pinnacle is of of being a you know a rodeo queen and so that's pretty cool it's going to be a pretty cool experience for them and then also yeah. out at the nfr we also have a youth junior board um that you know we of course have our board of directors but we have a youth board that is also huh. part of the organization so the youth board will travel out to the nfr as well with me and help us man the booth and sell raffle tickets and they'll get to be a part of it too so you know they're competitors that are on this youth board. So they'll get to see, you know, the top, the best of the best competing out there and be a, be a part of it. And so it kind of helps them fulfill, fill their dreams and kind of aspire to something for the future as well. Man, I love that, man. So many opportunities you're creating and I appreciate little bitches so much. And I appreciate our friendship just after a couple, you know, a couple of weeks, but man, I can't wait to see you in Vegas. And absolutely. And, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Well, thanks for everything you're doing and Little Rich is doing for our industry because it's very important. And thank you very much. And thank you all, all for watching the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Thank you to all the great sponsors of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. If you or your business is interested in being a sponsor of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show, please call our office at 830-992-1786 or visit our website, cowboyentrepreneur.com. Hi, I'm Scott Knudsen, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Heard on KCAA, Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd like to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about. Those that know me know I love my coffee. In the morning, afternoon, and even late in the evening, I enjoy a good cup of coffee almost any time of the day. Now, my team at the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show has been working for several months on creating and introducing our own brand of coffee. We wanted to make sure that we got it just right. We don't want to put our name on anything unless we're 100% certain that it's the best product available, and we've finally done it. We have created a wonderful line of coffees, 13 fantastic flavors offered in whole bean, ground, and K-cups, any way you like to brew your coffee. Now, each of our coffees carries our brand, the very same brand that we put on our horses, our trailers, and our chaps. So you know that this is a quality product. And we only use 100% Arabica beans, the very best beans available. Just listen to some of these wonderful blends and flavors. Jamaican Me Crazy, Honduran San Marcos, Chocolate Cherry Amaretto, Breakfast Blend, and my very favorite, Haley's Blend. A coffee so good, we named it after my daughter. You can order these coffees today by going online to javacowboy.com. That's javacowboy.com. And if you order today, you can get an extra 10% off your final purchase just by entering the promo code COWBOY on checkout. Remember, that's promo code COWBOY for an extra 10% off. Just go to javacowboy.com to order your coffee today. Hello, I'm Scott Knutson, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I want to tell you about a product I've tried and I love and I feel the Cowboy Entrepreneur audience will as well. It's Rebellious Infusions. Rebellious Infusions, they're little packets of flavor. And you know, it gets hot in South Texas, over 100 degrees every day. And I like my water, but it's water. So I use these infusions, put them in my water. It makes it cold. It's great flavor, zero sugar, zero calories. It's pure energy infusions, rebellious infusions. Go to drinkrebellious.com or on all social media platforms, Drink Rebellious.